Hello and welcome to It's Been A While. I am Free Tillman, the only guy on the internet that doesn't know everything. This is a series where I talk about albums that I loved as a kid, but for whatever reason, I stopped listening to them. And today we're talking about Bow Down by West Side Connection. Before I continue, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I release a new video and leave a comment. Now that I got that out the way, it's time to bow down. I was and still am a big Ice Cube fan. His 1988 to 1991 run was one of the best in the business. So when his protege Mac 10 released his debut self-titled album in 1995, I was all in. That album included the debut of West Side Connection on the song West Side Slaughterhouse. A few months later, they got together on Dub C's album Curb Serving on the song West Up. Ice Cube's beef at the time seemed to be that he felt that the West Coast wasn't getting the love they deserved by critics and radio stations. And maybe he was right, but 1994 gave us Fantastic Voyage by Coolio, Regulate by Warren G and Nate Dogg. 1995 gave us I Got Five Only by The Loonies and Dear Mama by Tupac. And 1996 gave us California Love by Tupac again. To be fair, New York, the birthplace of hip hop, was salty that the West Coast took over in the early 90s with the most obvious example being Tim Dogg's Fuck Compton. I get that you would want respect in the place that he clearly had love for, but it does seem like overkill to create an entire group around that idea. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to say that he was just riding the East Coast, West Coast way, but it does feel like he saw an opportunity and pounced on it. Having said that, when I first heard Bow Down, I instantly loved it, and maybe that was the point. It gave us a team to root for. It did feel a little weird that this album was released one month after we were reeling from Tupac's death, but I'm sure that's probably something that they couldn't prevent. When I look at the track listings, I do feel like I recognize everything, even the skits, so I feel like I'm going to really enjoy this one. Let's see if I'm right. I usually don't talk about intros in my reviews, but this is a great one. It's performed by actor Jonathan Hyde, who's probably most famous for playing J. Bruce Ismay in Titanic. He actually did voiceover on Ice Cube's next album, War and Peace, and they both starred in Anaconda. It also includes the use of the term Mount Westmore, a title that he used in his next supergroup. And this leads perfectly into the lead single, Bow Down, which was produced by Butter. This was his first really big hit. Before this, he produced a lot for Dr. Dre Presents the Aftermath, but the less said about that album, the better. His first production credit was on Caution's album, South Central Lost Scandalous, on Ice Cube's Lynch Mob Records. This song is a great introduction for what you're going to be getting for the rest of the album. Next is a stylistic sampling second single, Gangsters Make the World Go Round. Even though the beat is a little more laid back, lyrically the guys don't let up. My favorite verse is probably Mac 10's because he gets a little more specific with lines like, I gave up sports to sling keys but blamed it on my knees, or drug paraphernalia being found by my mama. All the critics in New York is pretty self-explanatory. I do find it weird that the guy that wrote No Vaseline didn't name any names on this song. No radio stations, magazines, or rappers were harmed in the making of this track, which seems like a missed opportunity. The most unfortunate lyric on this track came from Ice Cube when he says, I hope blood don't have to spill. Again, this album was released one month after Tupac's death and six months after Biggie's. Do You Like Criminals featuring KD is an anti-love song told the bougie ladies out there. The gangster, the killer, and the dope dealer is a cool concept in which each person is supposed to show what they bring to the table, with Ice Cube being the gangster, Dub C being the killer, and Mac-10 being the dope dealer. The problem is that lyrically, there's not enough separation between the categories to make this song sound like anything more than a West Side Connection song. The Nine Inch Nail sample does make it a standout though. Cross the Mountain Put a K is the first in a two-part diss fest directed at Cypress Hill. It takes two-thirds of the song for them to get to it, but when they do, it's pretty damning. My understanding is that Be Real felt that Ice Cube bit their song Throw You Set in the Air, along with other unreleased songs from their forthcoming album Temple of the Boom, which led to them beefing. Dub C, for his part, decided to stay out of it and set his sights on Q-Tip of all people. Tip had a line from a 1995 doo-wop freestyle where he said, to all the West Coast haters, we gon' bust your shit. Which, if you break it down, is actually a sign of solidarity with the West Coast. But Dub C took it out of context and wrote a verse about raping Q-Tip with a cucumber. King of the Hill is much more scathing with Ice Cube and Mac-10 going back to back, and it's the most energetic either of them sound on this whole album so far. Again, Dub C stayed out of it because of his close ties with DJ Muggs. Three Time Felons, I think, is the first time I ever heard the term rolling till the wheels fall off. And Westward Ho is a love song for all the gangster loving ladies out there. And it features the lines, did I mention that I think about you when I'm benching? And running my trigger finger through all your extensions. It's intense dreaming of a black picket fence. His and her nines teaching you how to rhyme on the mic. You Tina, I'm Mike. Who Bangin' is a posse cut featuring the Comrades, KD, and All From The Eye, and it's a great way to close out the album.
maybe just a little less. There are no truly skippable tracks, but there are quite a few that feel hollow. And as much as it pains me to say this, I think most of that emptiness falls on Ice Cube. Now what I'm about to say is gonna sound a little weird, but hear me out. I've never considered Ice Cube to be a gangster rapper. Now, the stuff that he wrote with N.W.A. was clearly gangster rap, I'm not debating that. But I always considered him to be a more political, socially conscious rapper. Especially on the Bomb Squad albums, he feels more like a street version of Chuck D. And I don't even need to mention the fact that Ice Cube was never in a gang. On his first three solo albums, he's never rapping just to be rapping. He always has a point, even if that point is a little misguided. On his fourth solo album, Lethal Injection, he toned down the social political talk, and that was the first Ice Cube album that I remember not really liking, even though You Know How We Do It is one of my favorite Ice Cube songs ever. Dub C does talk about gangbanging a lot, but he does it with such humor and charisma it doesn't get stale. And Mac-10 does talk about selling drugs, but every now and then he drops in some specific details to let you know it's not just hollow words. The only time Ice Cube sounds excited on this album is when he's dissing Cypress Hill. And that's another thing that I find weird. On an album that's supposed to be about the West Coast crushing all competitors, they don't have much to say about the East Coast. Aside from some brief references to Common and Q-Tip, it does feel like a lot of punches were pulled. The only real diss song in this album is about another West Coast rap group, a group that they were actually really close friends with. Taking this album completely at face value, it's really good, but when you dig a little deeper, there's not a whole lot there. So, when's the last time you heard Bow Down? Are you still bumping it to this day? I'm going to keep talking about albums until I run out. Until then, I am Free Tillman, the only guy on the internet that doesn't know everything. Peace.